uh, sandbox setups. Uh, but again, I like to frame them around the market and how the markets react. And one thing that I pay really close attention to are candle patterns at these decision points. And what I call decision points are pivot highs and lows, uh, dynamic support and resistance, and uh, weekly trading zones. Um, you'll see here how price just respected the zone, come up through, couldn't break it, and going back through it. So, you know, as the trade, this tells you two things. There was indecision here, tried to come up through and break it, couldn't break it. Another indecision bar here, and you have very little body to it. So it broke out, and it was decision time whether to move higher, sideways, or back down. The bars told us uh, it moved back down through. So early on, this is telling you here that this is an area on both of these charts that you want to pay particular plus attention to. This is going to be dynamic resistance as we move into the trading day. Basically, again, you know what I look for. Let me get on the right chart here. Forgive me if I go in circles because uh, I'm this is new to me here, so I'm just kind of talking out as I go. Um, oh, let me get back to why I have this this other ES here or EZ chart. ES don't. Here you'll see the 50 contract chart. Um, I kind of use this for a longer term day trade, for lack of a better term. It's a setup that Michael's discussed a couple of times in the room. I don't know how many are familiar with it, but it's it, it's pretty high probability. And so what I try to do is try to take a trade off of that on a separate dome, and uh, I'll hold it. Uh, generally with my target, I have a uh, I have a four point stop on that, and a three to six point target, uh, trading just a single contract. Uh, if you go back to yesterday, there was two perfect trade opportunities. Now on this setup, not so much paying attention to the cycle of the DMT, though we have it on there, just I like the visual that it gives me. Basically what you want to do is that you see my line here, the 930. I have this to mark the 930 opening. Once we open, you're looking for price to trade back to the MA1 and then away. And generally that's the direction the trade you want to take. That's really the only thing that's used. Here you can see we just started the downtrend prior to 9:30. Um, so you're looking to get short here on a pullback to it. You know you may get filled in here. It depends upon where you're probably using closing bars and prices. It depends. So if you miss that, no sweat. You know I keep that in the back of my mind and watch it and just keep an eye on it. The second opportunity comes here, where we put in a reversal candle here start to move up, start printing support bars across the bottom. The MA1's changed to blue. Price comes up, pulls back to it, actually took this trade. Um, you're looking just like the regular sandbox, you know, tick from the uh, MA1 with a four point stop and a, tar and a profit target. So three to six. Enter here and just let it ride. Depending upon your money management and how you do it, um, you got two options. You can you can take off anywhere in here. Me, I took off uh, right here. This pattern here. Come back, move back. Another entry here. Or you can just call it out. That's three points. Uh, that's not bad. Um, but if you held, you know, if you can trail your stop. Everybody's different. And you can see here. And you go back and look at this on your individual charts, and you'll see. Uh, how powerful that strategy is. Oh, I see a question. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Uh, let me look at these questions here. And you're asking me how many bars into the pattern do I pull the trigger? Are you talking about on the 50K? Uh, I 
don't see an answer. Are you answering? But but you're asking how many bars of the pattern? You're looking for the, the the first pullback to it. So as price pulls away from the MA1, the first pullback to it. You're looking for your entry. And again, on the 50K chart, you've got to give this thing to room to move because generally it, Michael's work has shown that you can get a three to six point cycle. It's usually good for that type of trade. So you want to at least try to make it a one to one. So giving it a four point stop, give it room to move, and you know you can adjust your risk accordingly. And you think about it in terms of a trade risk, you're risking $200 uh, for a longer term trade. If you catch one of these trend days like we had yesterday, like we do have, uh, you can ride it anywhere from there. Um, I've seen the trades go six, eight, ten points. It just depends upon how you manage it and what your individual risk parameters are. So that's, uh, that's that. Um, Lance, you're asking, what is the equivalent time frame of 50K contract chart? I'm not sure exactly the time frame. I'd have to look at that, but uh, you know, we like to use the contract charts here, just like Dwayne uses the 10K. Um, this is some work that Michael's done, so he's more qualified to speak on that than I am. Just that, you know, he, he spoke to me about it. I've watched it. We've watched it for a while. Dwayne's watched it, and I find it a very nice little trade to add to day trading um, if your risk parameters allow it. And, again, it can allow you to hold a trade longer throughout the day. Um, so has a lot of potential. So that's how I use that and why I have a separate DOM set up. And as you'll see, it, when you see me move here, you see the little tan bar up there for those of you that are new. That's my bracket set. Um, so I'm entering here. You see where my, my, my uh, stop's up here four points away. My target's down there at four to six points. You'd have to get down here to see it. There it is. And so that's why that's set up on the 6E. I'm using a 10 by 10, which is a 10 tick stop, 10 tick target. On that market, when I print five, that's print five, I move to break even. That market has a tendency to really jump around. Uh, you may get some stop outs, but so be it. Uh, it's a very fast market. And all you have to do is look at the chart yesterday where the thing moves 200 points or more to realize that it's a very, very volatile market. So I use a 10-10 there. ES, you can see my strategy here. Taking two off at three. Taking the last one off at six. The two-point stop. Uh, on the ZF, which is the five-year notes, I use a basic bracket of six ticks and six ticks. Look for six tick target, six tick stop. Now these are dynamic, depending upon how the market is. You know the market uh, is dynamic in nature, so you have to adjust. So it's very difficult to say I'm going to have a two-point stop, two-point target every time. You know, once you trade these things and, and get in the habit of looking at price action, uh, watching these indicators, looking at these candle patterns, you'll get a feel for things, and you just have to uh, act accordingly. And unfortunately. Sometimes it's uh, it's unexplainable. I was trading some with Bert yesterday um, on Instant Messenger, and you just get a feel for these things sometimes, and it's just experience. You know that I believe is the art of trading. Um, you, know, you have the science, which is the technical indicators. Uh, you know your support and resistance, things like that. But the art is the feel that you get for the for the movement of the market. Uh, sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. You know it is what it is. Uh, but Anyway, so that's how my DOM is set up. Uh, let's see if I have more questions here. Lance, you're asking why is the stop so far away? Are you talking about the 50K chart? I assume that you are. Uh, if you're talking about the 50K chart, you've got to give you've got to give the ES room to move. Um, you know, the ES is a really
a difficult market to trade. Everybody talks about it, how, you know, trade DS, trade DS, trade DS. So many professionals in this market. Uh, there's so many computerized programs. Um, you know, you have to give the markets room to move. Uh, Lance, you're saying four points in the S is 200. That's correct. Uh, that, that's a $200 risk on the trade. Uh, you know, to me, that's uh, a worthwhile trade. Uh, four points to make six. Uh, and again, that four points is a disaster stop, is what I call it. You know, very seldom uh, in any of my trading do I take a full stop out. Um, you know, that the stop is there just just for that these knee-jerk reactions that we sometimes get in the market to uh, protect you. Uh, so on a moving stop, you know, I generally take anywhere from on the on the on the uh, 50k six uh, four ticks, four three to five ticks on the uh, smaller frame chart two to three. As we get through this here in a second. Um, you know, we'll, you know, I'll show you how um, how I move these things, why and how we scratch these trades, and so you'll see that that stop is for protection. Uh, but I basically that's how I do it. That's how I've found to be successful. Um, and you also have to understand, you know, that the, the larger time frame you go, the more risk you take. Uh, and knowing how a good a good way to do it is on sim is look at is look at the trend of, is look at a trend on a bigger time frame, 50k, 30 minute chart. Pick an entry point. Give yourself a four-four bracket and see how long you stay in a trade. You know you'll you know you'll see that uh, you know, if you're right on trend, that 90% of the time you hit your profit target. You just have to give the market uh, room to move. 